Joy, thank you so much for meeting with me today. Um, would you just please explaining your role in the Hingham, Hingham Historical Society and how it has changed since the COVID-19 pandemic? Sure, so I'm the assistant director at the Hingham Historical Society and um, we have, everything has changed as, as it has for many on a dime. We were looking for forward to a very busy spring at the Historical Society. Um, in May, we've got, we typically hold field trips, which is something we look forward to. We have all the fifth grades from public and private schools come through both the Hingham Heritage Museum and Old Ordinary, give them tours, give them a wonderful kind of history background on the town and, and the current exhibitions that we have up. So unfortunately, all of those will not be happening this year. We also had the Successful Ways of Change lecture series. We had three more lectures in the series. Those have all been postponed. And just in general, the spring is a really busy time with both visitors from the town um, and out of town visitors coming in and uh, to see both um, the Heritage Museum and Old Ordinary, typically the month of May is very busy for our fantastic Old Ordinary Committee who are um, getting that house museum up and ready to go for the busy summer season. So all of that has been um, placed on hold and us like many other cultural institutions are looking for ways to communicate virtually with the town and with our members. So we've started uh, an email series that goes out weekly called History Moments that brings the history of Hingham to people via email. And we have also started the Living History Hingham on Hold project as a way for people um, to document in any way that they wish to share, whether it be photos, videos, their experience about living in Hingham during this COVID-19 pandemic. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw those um, those photographs you sent to me, and just to see Main Street, which I'm so used to, Fourth of July, like packed, like like bumping into people trying to record the parade. Just to see that empty was insane to me. It's jarring, isn't yeah. it? I was describing to someone out of town that normally our downtown is so bustling and vibrant, and to go down and see the the Loring Theater, the marquee empty and no lines <clears throat> outside of Nona's. It's, um, it's sad, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to see. Yeah, especially, you know, it's finally getting warm out. Like I really want some ice cream. I know, I know, <laughs> so do my kids. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so, you know, as I'm talking to, you know, friends and family, even coworkers, the one phrase I keep hearing is that this has never happened before. And, you know, growing up, there were like other, you know, sicknesses like H1N1 and stuff like that, but we were never stuck at home. How does that feel? You know, I'm a history buff, but you actually work with history every day. How does that feel for you to actually like live in history? Like you're living a story, like nothing will ever be like this again, hopefully. Right. And, you know, it's interesting. I think from the historical perspective and also living in this town, um, there's an odd sense of comfort, I think, that I get in that um, when, I, when we drive around our town and we see these beautiful buildings and homes um, and we think about um, what the people have endured in them, the previous people who were living in them, they lived through pandemics of smallpox, the 1918 flu, and many other illnesses that are easily cured today. They lived through wars. You think about um, Hingham's role in the Revolutionary War and our very own Benjamin Lincoln onto the shipyard and building ships for World War II. And our town and its people have always prevailed and endured. And I think in the past, something, the perspective I try to think about is that um, we have so many medical advances today, right, that um, we're living in, although this is a very difficult and tragic time for many, I think in some ways we have it easier than the previous generations. Um, but I think the main thing that I try to focus on is that we will get through this. Our previous generations have, um, and, uh, and there's some 
like I said, comfort in, I think a lot of us live in older homes, or as I said, we drive by them every day, and we think about that those people made it through, and so shall we. Positive vibes, I love it. Um, that's awesome. Um, so you mentioned before Hingham on Hold, which I think is awesome. Do you mind um, explaining that a little bit more in depth to our viewers? Sure, it became clear to us early on once we were all set in self-isolation that we were actually living right through a moment in history and that it was, um, we really felt the strong need to be a place where people could submit their experiences, whether that be, as I said before, through video, through a photograph, um, through a poem, through a painting, any way people wanted to convey and document how they are getting through this really difficult time. And, um, the submissions have been fascinating from ranging from high school uh, children to um, mothers at home with young children and trying to aid them in the homeschooling to retirees and the range of motions that that go through all those different age groups is different um, and so you know, I think in the past, in our archives, we have a lot of letters, we have a lot of diaries that we look to, to understand a lot of the past and the history of the town. And I don't, I don't think as much today people really um, think about writing down those hard copies as much. And, um, you know, if we think a hundred years into the future, um, an email you sent to someone, people might not have access to that. So to actually um, try to document for future generations um, what it was like, we, we found that, we thought it was incredibly important. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's crazy to think like 100 years ago, we didn't have like social media. Like we didn't have, we didn't have the ability to go right. live. We just had these letters. So like video these videos are kind of like our letters which i think is really exactly cool. yeah exactly and we see it as our role at this at the historical society and central to our mission is preserving those mm -hmm. and so you know we can be the place to gather collect and preserve and someday of future generations you know the historical society will be sharing them uh, but even as once we get out of this pandemic i think it will be interesting um, we do want to try to um, create, set, you know, collect all of these submissions and either um, do something to uh, share them with the community um, in and of themselves or also look at other pandemics that we've lived through in history and kind of group them together. And I think that would be an interesting um, exhibition at some point in time, whether it be online or in person, um, to see are there similarities? What are the differences? That's awesome. Um, would you be comfortable sharing some of these stories? You don't have to mention names at all. We can, we can keep privacy totally private. But would you mind sharing a couple? Sure. So um, one of one that struck me is um, a video submission of the kindness, the kindness rock project, and it's videos all through the town. A person was on a run, and then all along their road saw, saw all these rocks with all these inspiring messages. And I myself was on a walk through Hingham Center and saw all of these rocks. And so just the way that they set it to the music and um, reading all the inspirational quotes, I think that was just a really simple way for people to lift people's spirits in an otherwise dark time. Um, Another one was a high school um, student who, who her brother was trying to occupy himself with all this new free found, free found time. And he started playing the banjo. And while normally she said this would be incredibly um, annoying, um, she somehow was finding solace in these sounds and how kind of thinking forward that any time in the future she hears a banjo um, or thinks about her brother playing, it's always going to be connected to this point in time for her. Um, and then there's just some lovely pieces about people finding solace in their gardens and being out in nature 
And um, that's definitely a common theme, um, I think, for people to, to get outside in this time of self-isolation and try to find the beauty in the spring, um, in the flowers, and, uh, and enjoy it. That's awesome. That makes me so happy that there people are actually like not sitting in bed all day. They're actually like still active. Yeah, and we're trying to make it both high tech and low tech submissions. So we've got a wooden mailbox outside our museum at 34 Main Street. So if you're walking downtown, you'll see a white wooden mailbox with a slot. We also have a call in number um, so that you can just leave a recording about what you're feeling and the observations. Then you can always mail submissions to us at PO Box 434 in Hingham. You can go to our website um, and submit um, through the website. Um, or you can also email historymaker at hinghamhistorical.org. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible. And all of those different ways are also posted on our website, hinghamhistorical.org. So we hope to continue collecting them. I think you know, we're gonna be at home for some time longer. So um, we've had a steady stream of people submitting and we hope that that will continue. That's awesome. Um, you did actually just answered my last question. Do you have anything else you would like to add? Anything you'd like you know, the Hingham community or the South Shore community to know? during this time? Well, I would say um, that we are going to, um, again, in the future, we hope to gather all these submissions and then do some, some sort of way um, to share them back with the community and um, to um, keep in touch with our website for, we'll again, continue to try to share pieces from our collection, from our archives. And um, you can also sign up for our history moment emails just as a way to try to, you know, um, take your mind off some of all of this that's going on. And hopefully we'll be back um, open, you know, we'll be back open at some point and, um, and can welcome the community back into our properties. That's great. Well, thank you so much for meeting with me today. And hopefully we'll actually be able to meet in person soon. Um, yes, that would be great. <laughs> Thank you so much.